Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to do a little different structure to the videos where I'm going to discuss the status of all my other car projects, why there wasn't a video for my SEMA trip, and also get the Miata suspension adjusted in getting ready for autocross. For those of you who have been following my channel, you know that there should have been a video last year from the SEMA show. I drove down to the SEMA show and the plan was to drive the 67 Mustang down, hit Lake Havasu for a day before the show, and then hit some Route 66 locations on the way up to Vegas. Unfortunately, I ran into a lot of problems getting the car ready and my video equipment just didn't cooperate, so obviously that didn't happen. But before we dive into too many details on what's going on with the Mustang and some of my other projects, I'm going to get started adjusting the suspension on the Miata. Now this 92 Miata is a car I bought for my girlfriend to practice autocross on, and now it's her car, but all we did last year when she did a few autocross events was basic maintenance items. Now we just installed some teen coilovers and we need to get them dialed in. We've got them set pretty low, so I'm gonna bring them back up a little bit on the car. They're not rubbing, but there's, the camber's a little off and the car doesn't feel as performant as it should be. While I'm doing that, we'll talk about the Mustang. Now, the Mustang was mostly ready for the road trip when I got started, but I wanted to do a few reliability things. Most of it was things like build a floor for the trunk so we could put luggage in there without damaging the wiring or the fuel system. Things like sorting out some of the temporary wiring and making sure we had good connections and weren't going to have any problems on a really long road trip. But one of the items I really wanted to deal with was the ignition system. Now I've been using an HEI distributor setup that hadn't been advancing as well as I liked and was always just kind of a pain to work around. So my solution was to move over to the Holly HyperSpark ignition system. The Holly HyperSpark is a standalone ignition system that has an ignition box, a distributor, and a coil that gives you a much more powerful spark, but also has the ability to integrate with your Sniper EFI to allow the computer to control the timing curves. Now, this seems like a relatively straightforward installation, and that's what I was assuming to my detriment. When I ordered the kit, I ordered it with a few weeks before the trip, figuring I had plenty of time to get it installed and drive it and get everything dialed in. Unfortunately, when I got the kit delivered, they had sent me the wrong distributor. The supplier through Amazon had two different distributors with almost the same part number for the same engine. One is for high-rise intake manifolds and one is for a standard low manifold. Now, they sent me the high-rise manifold distributor, which when I read it, on the packing slip when it was delivered, I thought maybe it would still work because I assumed what that meant was the distributor would be taller. But what it actually meant is the distributor is much shorter to go underneath the intake manifold, which with my cross plane intake manifold meant there was no space and I couldn't actually drop it into the, the engine at all. So we sent that back. The company was great. They are, I made it and sent me another one that was correct. I got the distributor in and then had problems with the other Holly parts. So the other two parts to the system, the ignition box and the coil, are somewhat universal parts that Holly offers. And I'm sure that the ignition box is probably a rebranded MSD or something because it seemed pretty standard. The coil itself also seemed very standard, but when I had everything wired up, I couldn't get the coil to spark. So after a few tries with Holly's tech support on the phone and trying all our wiring and testing everything out, they concluded it was probably a problem with the coil. Now they said it's not uncommon for the coils to have some issues and that they would just send me another one. But at hearing that that's a fairly common problem, I decided to go ahead and order another coil anyway so that I'd have a spare because I don't want to be sitting in the desert because of a dead coil. The new coil changed the problem, but didn't remedy it entirely. So now we would have sparks that I could see on my spark light, but I didn't have actual ability to run the car. And what the conclusion was, was that this, the ignition box itself was actually stopping function partway through. And we thought maybe it was voltage drop due to the wiring. So we replaced all the wiring again and actually ran test wires directly from another battery to the unit, everything so that it was always on still had the same problem. So Holly decided to send me another ignition box as well. And to their credit, they didn't charge me for any of it. It just took time. And by the time I got the ignition box replacement, it was like two days before I had to leave for the trip. And while I did get it in and get the car running, I didn't have enough time to dial in the timing, 
make sure that it was actually working and figure out why my sniper EFI unit didn't want to update to the latest upgrade, which had the additional features I wanted for the timing. So I ended up having to take a different car on the road trip. The car I took was the Mercedes CLA. That's just sort of my extra car on the side that I keep around for when all my other cars are broken. And the car makes for a very boring road trip because it's just reliable and under warranty. So I didn't record a lot of video on the road trip down. And unfortunately, once I got down there, my video equipment didn't cooperate very well. And I ultimately didn't get the quality of footage and enough footage to put together a video that I thought would be reasonable. I did still meet my objectives. I got down to Havasu, got a chance to tour around a little bit, checked out some of the Route 66 places on the way up to Vegas. And I did get to catch up with Chris from Be Is For Build, who I wanted to check out his Lamborghini project because we've been friends for a while and I'm always interested to see what he's working on. But ultimately, it was not as productive of a trip as I would have liked from a video perspective. When I got back and realized I couldn't do a video, I went back to work on the Mustang and was going to do some videos on the Mustang through this winter. But ultimately, everything I was working on just seemed pretty boring and not worth recording. So it's been pretty quiet on the channel since then. Now that the weather's back and we're going to be getting the Miata ready for autocross, I'm gonna be trying to get the white 240Z back on the road. I started testing it, broke the differential, and just haven't got around to actually getting the diff rebuilt. Um, but that'll be back on the road. Those two cars should be in a lot of videos this year. I also have the 1940 Chevy that's going to be getting some rewiring and a few other cleanups. I might be converting that to EFI too. I really don't like the Edelbrock carburetor that's on it. And ultimately the car runs really well. I just think the carburetor is being extremely difficult to get dialed in. So that may be a project coming up in the not too distant future. I also have the red 280Z that's going in for paint. We're replacing the roof skin so that we can delete the sunroof. And that car will be getting a new paint job and probably a different color. I'm trying to find some balance between the retro root beer color it used to be and a more modern take on it using a lot more metallic in clear coat. So we'll see if we can't come up with a brown that isn't an ugly brown. I'll also be replacing the interior in that. So I may do some videos on that as well because any color other than black for an interior is wrong. I'll also be working on a 1976 Triumph TR6 that isn't supposed to be my project, but I inherited. And it is now back from the fab shop getting new floor pans put in it. And I need to figure out why the charging system isn't working anymore and why the ignition system seems a little finicky, as well as why the throttle seems to stick every time you touch it. So those weren't problems when it left, but now they're my problems because I want it fixed and out of my shop. I also have another project out there that I started to tease you guys with last year and haven't had any time to touch again, which is a 1955 Buick Special that we have entirely rebuilt everything under the car, did a chassis off, powder coat on the frame, uh, undercoated the whole thing, rebuilt the engine, all, all the wells and whistles, but kept it looking original and didn't repaint the car so it still has the worn feel to it and a little bit of patina to it. Now, not rust ball patina like some people would assume, but just has the correct period look in the original interior to it. That car will hopefully be getting some love this summer because I've been putting it off for years because I haven't had room time or the interest in trying to figure out where all the suspension parts go in the front end. But once I get that sorted out, that'll be on the channel as well. There may be other projects here because I seem addicted to buying projects before I finish other projects. So those will also find their way onto the channel, but it should be a fairly busy year for videos. If you have anything in particular you wanna see me cover on any of my projects, just leave it in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.